Stay tuned till the end of this video where I'll tell you exactly what you should do with your plywood cutting board. To begin, I'm taking a 3 quarter inch sheet of plywood and I'm going to rip it down with my track saw, cutting it at roughly 14 inches in width. With the initial cut done with the track saw, I can take out my crosscut sled and cut these pieces down into more manageable sizes. After a quick sanding with some 80 grit sandpaper to expose that beautiful plywood grain, I can set up a stop lock on my crosscut sled. And this will allow me to cut down some equal size strips. Now obviously here I had the automatic feature turned on to my crosscut sled, but it lost its functionality after the first two cuts, so I had to cut the rest one cut at a time. With all the strips now cut, I can take them over and sort them by the most beautiful pieces of plywood that I can find. Now I'm trying to find pieces where the gaps are just a little bit too large to work with, and so I'm putting those aside, and I'll use the rest to create the final board. Now taking the pieces over to the bar clamps, I can make sure that they're aligned in the proper position before I lay each of them out on the table. This will allow me to apply glue to all the surfaces evenly before I clamp everything up. After applying a liberal amount of glue, I can take a roll over each of the pieces to make sure that they're equally covered. Keep note of the sacrificial piece of pine at the bottom there. This will prevent any tear out in the planer. And after assembling the pieces onto the bar clamps and letting them dry, I can come back over with a chisel and scrape off all the excess glue. After all the excess glue is scraped off, we can take it over to the crosscut sled and put a fresh edge on our board. After we have a fresh edge, we're going to put a little bit of a design in here. I decided to go with three randomly spaced cuts, and in between each of these cuts, I'm going to put another piece of plywood. This will act as a break in the design and really adding to the overall aesthetic of the piece. Now this really does bring out the beauty of plywood, and you always want to have this when working with plywood cutting boards. Going back over to our glue station, we can apply some more glue to each of these new strips that we cut. And again, after letting them dry, we can scrape off the excess and take it back over to our crosscut sled. Back over here, we can cut another fresh edge, and then realizing that we don't really need a sacrificial piece for the planer, we can just cut that off. After all, plywood is extremely durable, it can withstand a little bit of tear out. After getting both the top and bottom nice and smooth in the planer, we can go back over to the table saw and turn the blade to 45 degrees. I decided to put a nice chamfered edge along all four sides in the bottom, so I'll do that now. Now as beautiful as those voids are in plywood, here we're going to fill them with a little bit of wood filler. With the wood filler set up, we can take some 80 grit sandpaper over the entire piece. The next step is to use a damp cloth, and this will raise any of the remaining fibers, which we can then knock down with some 220 grit sandpaper. With sanding complete, we can take our board inside and apply some mineral oil. And this board will really soak up any liquids you put on it, so be prepared to have extra on hand. Now as you can see from the shot, bubbles will start to come out of all the pores in your plywood. And I'm not sure if this is a good thing, but at least it's doing something. After the board has soaked up all the mineral oil that it wants, I can apply some of my homemade wood conditioning oil. The last step in this project is to install some rubber legs, so we can drill the holes and install each one of them. And with that, the board is complete. 